Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we are going to talk about the Smith trigger, and we will understand what is this Smith trigger, what is the purpose of using this Smith trigger in electrical and electronic systems, and how it can be designed. Now in the last video of comparator, we have seen that it can be used to compare the two voltage levels. But the problem with this comparator is that if input signal is noisy, in that case, your output will be get affected. and you will not get the desired output so let's say we have one comparator and to this comparator we have applied this input signals v1 and v2 now here assume that this signal v1 is the input signal and this signal v2 is the reference signal and assume that this signal are ideal signals so in that case as v1 is greater than v2 so you should get a constant high output voltage but if this signal v1 is noisy in that case it is possible that it can affect your output voltage so let's say because of the noise this v1 signal looks like this so if you observe this signal v1 then you can notice over here that this signal v1 crosses this signal v2 at these two locations so for the time period for which this signal v1 is less than v2 for that duration you will get a low voltage so because of the noise you will see the transition in the output voltage or we can say that your output will be get affected because of the noise in this input signal so we can say that this comparator is not immune to the noise and because of that it can affect your output now this kind of problem can be avoided by using the smith trigger now the smith trigger is nothing but the comparator with the hysteresis it means that the smith trigger has a two threshold voltages one is the upper threshold voltage that is for low to high transition and second is the lower threshold voltage that is for high to low transition and this is the symbol of a smith trigger so now let us understand how this smith trigger circuit works so here let us say the signal which is represented in a red color is the input signal and this two are the upper and the lower threshold voltage for the given smith trigger so now let us see how the smith trigger will respond to this given input signal and here let us assume that the initial voltage across this smith trigger is zero so as you can see over here initially the input signal is zero and gradually it is increasing so the output of this smith trigger will remain low till the point this input signal crosses this upper threshold voltage so up to this point your output signal will remain zero and from that point onward your output signal will remain high now if you observe over here once this input signal crosses this upper threshold voltage then after it deviates around this upper threshold voltage but then also your output signal will remain high and it will go to the low voltage only when this input signal goes below this lower threshold voltage so at this point once again your output will become low and it will remain low till the point once again this input signal crosses this upper threshold voltage so again at this point your output will become high and it will remain high after that point so as you can see over here even if your input signal varies around this upper and the lower threshold voltage then also your output signal will not get changed and it will remain constant so we can say that this mid trigger provides the noise immunity over this band and the difference between this upper and the lower threshold voltage is known as the hysteresis voltage of the smith trigger so basically this hysteresis voltage defines the noise immunity of the given smith trigger so if you observe this example there are four parameters which is required to define the smith trigger the first two are the high and the low output levels of the smith trigger and the remaining two are the upper and the lower threshold voltages which will decide the triggering instant for the smith trigger so these four parameters defines the characteristic of the smith triggers and the characteristic of this smith trigger graphically can be represented by this transfer characteristic curve so here on the x axis we have the input voltage and on the y axis we have the output voltage so now for the given example let us draw the transfer characteristic of the smith trigger so if your input signal is less than the upper threshold voltage level of the smith trigger in that case your output will remain low and as soon as it crosses this upper threshold voltage level then your output will become high and if the input signal 
goes beyond this upper threshold voltage level then also your output will remain high now suppose if your input signal starts reducing then also your output signal will remain high and it will remain high till the point your input signal goes below this lower threshold voltage level so as soon as your input signal goes below this lower threshold voltage then again your output will become low voltage and if your input signal goes below this lower threshold voltage then also your output will remain low so this is how the smith trigger can be represented using this transfer characteristic so this transfer characteristic is also known as the hysteresis curve for the smith trigger so now here if your output voltage levels vh and vl are equal and opposite in polarity in that case your transfer characteristic curve will be symmetric with respect to the y axis and by providing the reference voltage as a input to this smith trigger we can shift this curve either to the right or the left hand side so for the smith trigger which has a this kind of transfer characteristic curve is known as the non inverting smith trigger because here once your input signal crosses this upper threshold voltage level then your output will become high and when your input signal is less than this lower threshold voltage at that time your output will become low so we can say that this transfer characteristic curve is the curve for the non inverting smith trigger similarly we can have a hysteresis curve for the inverting smith trigger so in case of this inverting smith trigger whenever your input signal is less than the upper threshold voltage level at that time your output will be high and once it crosses this upper threshold voltage level then your output will become low voltage and if we go beyond this upper threshold voltage level then also your output will remain low now suppose this input signal starts reducing then also your output will remain low and it will remain low till the point your input signal crosses the lower threshold voltage level so once this input signal crosses this lower threshold voltage level then once again your output will become high so this is the transfer characteristic curve of the inverting smith trigger and this curve can be shifted either to the right or left side by providing the external reference voltage as a input to this inverting smith trigger so this is the symbol of the inverting smith trigger so if you observe over here the hysteresis curve inside this triangle is the hysteresis curve for the inverting smith trigger or it can be even represented by adding the bubble at the notch of the non inverting smith trigger so now that is being said now let us see how we can design this inverting and the non inverting smith triggers so there are many ic's are available which can be directly used as a smith trigger but this smith trigger can also be designed by using the op amp and the comparators or even it can be designed by using the transistors so in this video we will understand how this inverting and the non inverting smith triggers can be designed by using the op amp so this is the example of inverting smith trigger which is being designed using the op amp so here the input is applied at the inverting terminal and there is a positive feedback from output to the input side so now let us understand how this circuit will act as a inverting smith trigger so here assume that the voltage at this non inverting terminal is equal to v plus now for this circuit whenever your v in is greater than v plus at that time your output voltage will become low voltage and whenever your v in is less than v plus at that time your output will be high so first of all let us find the expression for this v plus and it can be found by applying the kcl at this node so applying kcl we can write this v plus minus 0 divided by r1 plus v plus minus v out divided by r2 that is equal to 0 that means the summation of this two current is equal to 0 and if we simplify it then we will get the expression for the v plus as r1 divided by r1 plus r2 times this voltage v out now here initially assume that the output of this smith trigger is equal to high voltage that is vh and in that condition let us assume this voltage v plus that is equal to v1 so we can write this voltage v1 as r1 divided by r1 plus r2 times this voltage vh so when your input signal v in is 
greater than this voltage V1, in that case, the output of this op-amp or the Smith trigger will become low voltage. So now whenever your input signal V in is greater than this voltage V1, in that case, your output will become low. And this voltage V1 is known as the upper threshold voltage of this inverting Smith trigger. So we can say that the upper threshold voltage for the inverting Smith trigger is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage VH. Now once this condition is satisfied, at that time your output of this Smith trigger will become low voltage and it will remain low till the point when this input signal V in is less than this voltage V plus. Now once the output of this Smith trigger is low, in that case your V plus will become R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage VL. And let us say in this condition, this voltage V plus as V2. Now in this condition, the output of this mid trigger will become high only when this input signal V in is less than this voltage V2. So whenever this condition is satisfied at that time, the output of this Smith trigger will become again high. So this voltage V2 is known as the lower threshold voltage of the Smith trigger. So we can say that the lower threshold voltage of the Smith trigger is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage VL and the upper threshold voltage is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage VH. And the difference between this upper and the lower threshold voltage is known as the hysteresis voltage of the Smith trigger. And basically this hysteresis voltage defines the noise immunity of the Smith trigger. So let's say for example, in this condition, the VH is equal to 12 volt and VL is equal to minus 12 volt and R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R. So in this condition, the upper threshold voltage for the given Smith trigger will become 6 volt and the lower threshold voltage will become minus 6 volt and the hysteresis will be equal to 6 minus minus 6 that is equal to 12 volt. So in this way, we can design the inverting Smith trigger by using the op-amp and we can even shift the transfer curve either right or to the left by providing the external reference voltage as an input to this inverting Smith trigger. So now that is being said, now let us see how we can design the non-inverting Smith trigger by using this op-amp. So here we have applied the input at the non-inverting terminal and there is a positive feedback from output to the input side. So now let us understand how this circuit will act as a non-inverting speed trigger. So once again, assume that the voltage at this node is equal to V plus. And here if you observe, the inverting terminal is at a ground potential. So whenever the V plus is greater than zero, in that case, the output of this op-amp will be high. And whenever the V plus is less than zero, in that case, the output of the op-amp will be low. So first of all, let us find the expression for this voltage V plus. So once again, let us apply the KCL at this particular node. So applying KCL, we can write V plus minus V in divided by R1 plus V plus minus V out divided by R2 that is equal to zero. Or we can say that V plus multiplied by 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 that is equal to V in divided by R1 plus V out divided by R2. And if we simplify it, then we will get the expression of V plus as R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times this input voltage V in plus R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times the voltage V out. So this is the expression of the V plus in terms of the input voltage and the output voltage. Now here initially assume that the output of this op-amp is low that is V out is equal to VL and in that condition let us say this voltage V plus as a voltage V1. So the expression of the VL will become R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times this input voltage V in plus R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times this voltage VL. So whenever this voltage V1 
is greater than 0 in that case the output of this op amp will become high so we can say that for this condition r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times this v in should be greater than minus vl multiplied by the r1 divided by r1 plus r2 or we can say that v in should be greater than minus r1 divided by r2 times this voltage vl so whenever this condition is satisfied in that case the output of this op amp will become high so this voltage is known as the upper threshold voltage for the smith trigger so we can say that the upper threshold voltage is equal to minus r1 divided by r2 times this voltage vl now here we are assuming that the low voltage level for this op amp is a negative so if you see the upper threshold voltage will become positive so this is the expression of the upper threshold voltage for the non inverting smith trigger so whenever this condition is satisfied in that case the output of the op amp will become high and once this output voltage will become high in that condition the expression for the voltage v plus will get changed so in this condition when the output voltage v out is high then let us say the voltage v plus that is equal to v2 and for this condition the v2 will become r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times the input voltage v in plus r1 divided by r1 plus r2 times this voltage vh so here basically we have replaced this output voltage v out by vh so now in this condition the output of this mid trigger will become low only when this v2 is less than 0 so we can say that for this condition this voltage r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times this v in should be less than minus r1 divided by r1 plus r2 times this voltage vh or we can say that the input voltage v in should be less than minus r1 divided by r2 times this voltage vh so once this condition is satisfied in that case once again the output of this smith trigger will become low voltage and for this input voltage for which this condition is satisfied is known as the lower threshold voltage for the non inverting smith trigger so we can say that the lower threshold voltage is equal to minus r1 divided by r2 times the voltage vh so in this way the expression for the upper threshold voltage is equal to minus r1 divided by r2 times the voltage vl and the expression for the lower threshold voltage is equal to minus r1 divided by r2 times the voltage vh and here we are assuming that vh and vl are equal and opposite in the polarity so in this way we can design this non inverting smith trigger by using this op amp now we can shift this transfer curve either to the right or left side by providing the external reference voltage so if you provide the external reference voltage then according to the polarity of this reference voltage we can shift this transfer curve either to the right or to the left side so in this way using this op amp circuit we can design this inverting and the non inverting smith triggers so this smith trigger is particularly useful when we want to compare the two voltage levels and we know that the input is a noisy so this smith trigger can be used as a level comparator and it can be used in analog to digital conversions apart from that this smith trigger can be used as a wave shaping circuit so if you have a sine wave or triangular wave and if you want to convert that wave into the square wave then using the smith trigger we can convert it apart from that if you observe over here we are providing the positive feedback to the op amp to design this smith trigger so using this smith trigger we can even design the multi vibrator or the oscillator so these are the few applications in which this smith trigger can be used so in the next video we will take some examples and through the examples we will see the different applications in which this smith trigger can be used so i hope in this video you understood about this inverting and the non inverting smith triggers so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos 